A very blessed day, everyone. Greetings to you in the name of the Father, the Creator, the Most High, Allah, Yah, Yod, Hit, Vahu, Hit, Elohim, God in our modern day name, and in the name of the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Yehovah. This is Neophyte DAG bringing you another message taken from the series, Your Temporary Happiness is because we've been following the plan of Lucifer. We might think we're not, or we weren't, but we all were following his plan. And we're going to go into the part of the plan that he has been leading us astray. And now it's time for us to know what these plans were and see how they go against the plan of the Most High. We're going to go back to writers and addendums to the agreement the contract, the covenant that we have made with the Most High and the Most High have made with us through the Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah. Now we're going to go right back to where we left off in the last message. We talked about the contract itself, the agreement, the covenant, what the Lord and the Most High agreed to do and what we, which are the people of the Most High and of the Lord, have agreed to do. This is spelled out in the book of Jubilees, chapter 6. So you can go back to it, use it as your reference. But the Lord agreed that he would not destroy the earth, which is America, or any of the other lands, with a flood. This law, this agreement was put in place after the flood of Noah. So the agreement was made. We would not send any more floods. All the days of your planting, your harvesting, your reaping time will be flourishing. That's my agreement the Lord has made. You will have four seasons. The four seasons will remain. That means you were in the center of the planet, which had those four distinct seasons. You will be greatly increased in your numbers. That's your social. Going back to this, item two was your economics. You would till that ground and you would have economics from it. Everything economics come from the earth. So I'll make your planting time, your harvest time endless and you shall share it among all people, not hoarding it for yourself and setting high prices that no one else can afford. The children of Israel and their descendants will be blessed. God blessed man. We're reading back Genesis 1 verse 28. He blessed you so that blessing will continue. That's the agreement that was made. The children of Israel and their descendants will subdue and rule over everything on land and on the sea and in the air. That's part of your Genesis 1 verse 28 contract the covenant that the Most High made with you. That's political. You will subdue everything around you and you shall be greatly feared, both respectfully and be afraid of the people of the Most High because they know what energy you were drawing from your contract with the Most High. And the children of Israel and their descendants will be esteemed before the Lord at all times. That means you say your prayer to the Lord and to the Holy Spirit. Front row in getting your prayers answered and not be answered as it is right now by Lucifer and his fallen angels. That's the agreement the Most High and the Lord made. And what we're supposed to do as part of that said agreement, we would not eat blood which is in the flesh of any kind, whether flying on the ground or in the water, regardless of what you read in Leviticus. That's not the contract. That's an addendum that was added by man because he knew he was going to break these laws. But the original agreement says you would not eat any blood which is in any flesh at all times. And to show that you were part and you continuously agreed with that covenant, you celebrated the Feast of Shibut. That was your agreement that you would have made. Four times throughout the year, you would do it. The first moon of the first month, the first month start in Nissan, which is usually between March and April. 
Three months after that, the other she booed. Another three months after that, the other she booed. Another three months after that, the other she booed. That's part of the agreement. To reconfirm that you agree with the original agreement and you would have a Passover once a year to show your agreement with the plan and the works of the Most High and the Lord. You would have that agreement in the same month of Nisan, Abib, Aviv, the first month. So during the first Shibuit, you would have a Passover as well. And to show that you agree to make sure all your male sons have a connection back to this agreement, you agreed that you would circumcise all newborn sons once they are eight days old. You would cut the skin off their penis as a sign to show that the parent is going to teach this male son of not consuming meat and continuing to obey the covenant that ye shall not eat meat of any kind, which is of the blood. That was the contract. Now we're going to talk about the addendums that were added to that contract because the contract kept changing as the children of Israel kept changing what they need to follow because it does says in the contract, if you were outside of the contract, you were acting contrary to what you agreed. You shall be cut off. Because you agreed you would keep all these rules. Pass it down to your descendants. You will be uprooted if you move away from the contract. So without further, let's go into the addendums. We covered addendum one from the previous message, which was no idols or graven image. Now we're going to cover addendum two, which is addendum is an addition to the original agreement. We agreed one thing, but I'm adding something new because something changed the contract and rather than kicking you out of the agreement, I added another clause to give you an opportunity to stay within the contract. It's an additional item, something added. The Sabbath, that's what we're going to talk about. Shabbat, Sabbath. That's the second addendum that was added to your contract with the Most High. Sometimes we call it the statutes for ease of understanding. I'm putting it as your addendum. First addendum, no graven or molten image that you're going to bow down and worship to because the Lord Thoth Melchizedek Jehovah and the Most High Allah Yah Yod Heh Vahuh that was the gods that you were going to bow down to and worship, not the other ones that are stuck in the red zone, lower fourth dimension and second dimension, masquerading as lower G gods, Dagon and his followers, not those. So let's move into the Sabbath. Let's talk about the Sabbath. Jubilees, the book of Jubilees, chapter 2. And the Most High and the Lord created a sign in accordance with which they keep the Shabbat with us, the children of Israel, the ones who have that spiritual connection. But we lost it, and now it's time that we're going to get it back to eat, to drink, and to bless the Most High and the Lord who has created all things as the Thoth, he, the Lord, has blessed and sanctified, set apart as holy unto himself, a peculiar people above all people, the children of Israel, the children of Jacob, the children of Judah, and all those who want to be a part of the Most High's plan, laws, and covenants. So this day was set aside for you as a special day for you to drink, to eat, and to be blessed. And why are they doing that? Let's move in some more and we can find out why. Because this day is an extremely important day. Very important. Ezekiel 20 verse 20. Hallow my Sabbath. 
make holy and show great respect to my Sabbaths, all of them, which is the seventh day of a week, the day of rest. And they, those Sabbaths, shall be a sign between me and you, O children of Israel, though you may know, though you may know it's not that, though you may know, though I am the Lord, your nectar, though is your Lord, not the lower G that's masquerading themselves as lords and as gods and all kind of things they have set up themselves as and robbed you off your Sabbath. Though I am the Lord, your God, I'm setting up this day as a sign between me and you, not between you and they, God, or whoever else he has put in place to pull you away from this day. Every Sabbath is the sign, a spiritual connection, a spiritual communication. That's the day you communicate the strongest with the Most High and the Lord. Because he set it up as a sign for a peculiar people which are above all people because they're truly the original spiritual people on this planet. Book of Jubilees again, we go back. Chapter 2 of the book of Jubilee, the laws of keeping the Sabbath. There's a law for it that I've been telling you. That's why it's your addendum. There's a law that you should keep it. Therefore, the Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, commanded concerning the Sabbath. Let everyone who will do any work therein, no, you can't do it. You're going to break your contract and be uprooted. And whosoever defile this day, spiritually, he shall die. You shall be uprooted because you have to keep your end of the contract. So everything on the left hand side that the Lord is going to provide shall be provided to you. You have to maintain what's on the right hand side. Verse 26. And you command the children of Israel, command them and let them guard this day so they might sanctify it, treat it respectfully, observe it, and do not do any work. You have to rest. That's your day of rest. That's how the most die and the spiritual kingdom work. A day of rest from all things. It's a day to unwind, reconnect yourself back to your spiritual energy because it is a day more holy than any other day. So if you're missing that holy day on the Sabbath, coming on another day the Sunday, you're late for the party. It's already done and you're coming late getting nothing. Everyone who pollutes this day shall surely die spiritually. Tell me you haven't been following the laws and the plan of Lucifer. Are you practicing your Sabbath on a Saturday? Drawing in this energy on the day that's more holy than any other day? No, we have not. We have not been doing it. And we have been dying spiritually because we're not connecting ourselves back to the energy that's being available, that's made available on that day. Children of Israel, guard this day. Children of Israel, I say, guard this day. It's your day. Guard it. It's your day. This day throughout all your generation and not be uprooted, not die spiritually. Not be uprooted physically from your land because he said, I will keep you on your land and make sure your land is good for harvesting, reaping. Everyone that's on that land with you shall be afraid of you, respect you, and fear you at the same time because you're connected with the Most High. Guard your Sabbath, my children. This day throughout all your generation, not be uprooted because it is a holy day and a blessed day. You're not coming on Sunday anymore late for the day. No, the day already passed one day before.
And every man who guards it and keeps it, keeps the Sabbath, the seventh day, from all his work will be holy and blessed always, children of Israel. I want you to get your blessings back. You're missing out on your blessing. And each day you miss your blessing. It's being used against you to keep you longer in that dying state. To keep you longer in that uprooted state. No more shall it be if you're hearing this message. Make known and recount to the children of Israel the judgment of the day. That they shall keep the Sabbath. Not forsake it, which we have been put on that path to forsake it in error of their hearts. Because our hearts, which is our thoughts, have been tricked and been moved away from the Most High. And the Lord's law of the Sabbath, we've been missing these days. It is not permitted to do any work. We're busy working and doing all kind of things on the Sabbath because it is unlawful. We have been breaking our own laws. We have been breaking our own contract. And we're wondering why the blessings have been escaping us. Why? And it's telling us, keep the Sabbath so you can be blessed always. Don't break the law. Because if you break the law, you shall be uprooted. But we have been put on that path to break it quite freely. And do it bravely and proudly. They should not prepare anything or anything that was not made on that day before no you can't be doing any big cooking or any big splashing or any big things you gotta brace yourself for that relaxation eat drink be merry bring your spirit back to the lord and the most die on that day it's your day of rest from everything they should not prepare anything which will be eaten or drunk on that day. You can't prepare it on that day. You got to do it the day before and have it ready for the day of the Sabbath. It's your day of rest. They have not prepared for themselves on the sixth day. So on the sixth day, you prepare everything you need on your seventh day of rest. You prepare it on the Friday and then you have it ready to be eaten or to be drunk on Saturday, it is not lawful to draw water or to bring or to take out any work within your dwelling, doing all kind of different things, fixing up your yard, fixing up your house, washing up your car, all kind of things you're busy doing with all these physical things you're dressing up and your spirit lays naked on your Sabbath. They shall not bring in or take out from their house anything on that day. No, it shall not be because you have already prepared yourself and have everything you need in your dwellings on that day. On this day, we keep the Sabbath in heaven. That's why it's so important. It's going on as well in the fifth dimension. It's going on as well in the sixth dimension. It's going on as well in the seventh dimension, the eighth dimension, the ninth dimension. It's going on as well. So everyone is pooling their energy in the spiritual realm, sending it down to you in the third dimensional realm. But you're coming one day late to the party of spiritual energy to give you your blessing this is why you've been missing out on your blessing and wondering why nothing is working for me anymore. On this day, we keep the Sabbath in heaven. Before it was made known to any man or woman to keep the Sabbath, we were doing it in heaven and we make you a part of it and brought you in and you are missing it now because you're not being a part of it. The creator of all blessed the Sabbath but he did not sanctify it for any people or nation to keep the Sabbath with the sole exception of Israel, the sole exception of the spiritual beings who came here to do a job and they fell into a fallen state and moved away from the Most High's light. Now you have to walk back into this light because this day was kept and sanctified for you. 
not anyone else, not Lucifer, not the church, whatever denomination of church you want to throw into the picture, not made for them, but for Israel, that people that came here that shall overcome the phase of darkness that we're transitioning out of. Those are the people he granted to them alone. If this message is reaching you and you feel impacted by it, you are Israel. Walk back into what you are. Walk back into what you are being held accountable for in your agreement. If this message doesn't resonate with you, it will one day. Keep it in the back of your head. If you want your blessing, walk into it. That's all you have to do. This law and testimony was given to the children of Israel as a what? An eternal law for all their generation. So this law and this agreement is still running. Walk back into it and walk back into your blessings and your holy spiritual things. Eternal, it doesn't run off temporary and you're happy one day with it, sad one day with it. No, it's an eternal law which is going to give you eternal blessing. That's why I can say you've been stuck in temporary happiness because you've been following the plan of Lucifer. Are you getting that blessing going to church every Sunday and missing out your Sabbath? No, because you're still in the same state. You're still held in the same servitude state. This is more law pertaining to the Sabbath. I won't read through all of it, but I will leave it here and let you know where you can find it. Book of Jubilees, chapter 50. Go and take a read. Read through it and I'll leave it on the screen. You can pause it and read through so you can get more understanding as to what you need to do on your Sabbath to bring yourself back in holy alliance with the spirit of the Most High, the spirit of the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah. Get back to your Sabbath, my people. Move back to your contract. Move back to your covenant and stop walking in contrary to the Lord and the Most High's laws. Jump off the plan of Lucifer and jump back on your father's plan. Guess who know about your plan? Guess who know about your eternal covenant with the Most High? Guess who knows about it and will do everything that he can to make sure he uproots you, to make sure you miss the day the blessing is coming, to make sure you don't have that holy alliance back to your Father and the Lord? Guess who? Guess who? Hosea 8 verse 8. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein there is no pleasure. You can't get any pleasure, O Israel, because you moved off your covenant. And one of the ways you moved was you moved yourself off the date when your blessing was being renewed on your Sabbath. Israel was swallowed up when they were scattered among the Gentiles. Let's make no mistake about it. The Gentiles are the Japhetite Esau. Go back to my Esau message. And they're being represented in the vessels of the Caucasian people, which are in our modern day. We call them white, but the white as well are part of Israel. You shall be among Israel. So disassociate yourself from all this plan of Lucifer, O oh my Gentiles, and walk in the covenant of the Most High. Hosea 8 verse 12, I have written to you, O children of Israel, the great things of my law, my law of the Sabbath, children of Israel, I have written it to you and I've told it to your forefathers for them to pass it down to you. Go back to my law, but they were counted as strange things. The Sabbath is strange right now. What the hell is that? Saturday, I'm going to have to party on my Saturday. I'm going to wash this. I'm going to fix my house. I'm going to visit this. I'm going to do all kind of things. So the law of the Sabbath is strange unto you, but it's your law. 
That's what I'm here to tell you today. No more stranger to your own law. No more no pleasure than you from out of the Gentiles, how they're working you because you don't know your law and you're not walking in your law. So you can subdue them. That's what your agreement said. That's what your agreement says here. Isn't that what it says? Item number six, isn't that what it says? The children of Israel and their descendants will subdue and rule over everything on the land, the sea, and the air. If you're following your law, who can govern over you? When the most I say, I'm going to make sure you subdue everything. Follow what's on the right-hand side and all of what's on the left-hand side is yours. That's the agreement that was made. But if you're walking outside of what's on the right side, the left side shall be taken away from you, uprooted out of you. So this is why you can't get any pleasure because you're walking away from the laws, the great things of the law, the most I am the Lord have shown unto you. Let's talk about who know about your law and made sure that they got you off your law. Made sure that when they're passing all their doctrines as part of their Roman Catholic religion to get you off your agreement with the Most High. Think I'm making this thing up? No thoughts and planning had gone into making sure that you walk contrary to your covenant, your contract with the Most High. The Sabbath day has been changed by the Pope to the Lord's day due to the preeminence of things signified and the excellent factor in agreement with time and circumstances, not agreement with the Lord and the Most High. He's giving you another agreement with time and changing law. That's what he's doing. He's changing your time and your law. It was part of his own agreement. Quest el de dispensacione. That's what he made your changes into. That's what he made your changes into. History identified the Pope that decreed the change of the Sabbath to Sunday. As Pope Sylvester, go do your own research if you don't believe me. His papacy began January 31st, 314 AD. And he ended his reign of terror December 31st, 335 AD. On March 7th, 321 AD, Roman Emperor, under the advice of Pope Sylvester I, issued a civil decree making Sunday a day of rest for your labor. Did the most I tell them to change it and didn't tell you about that? Did the Most High tell them to change it and didn't send you that amendment to your agreement? No, man changed it himself via the advice of Lucifer. That's why I'm telling you, you're on the plan of Lucifer. Jump off his plan, leave that plan vacant and let him practice his own plan. Get back on the Most High plan. Sunday was another work day in the Roman Empire. On March 7, 321, however, Roman Emperor, under the advice of Pope Sylvester I, issued a civil decree making Sunday a day of rest from your labor. No way did the Most I tell you to change it from Saturday to Sunday. None at all. That's all, man, under the advice of Lucifer. The pyramid of darkness changing your agreement. All judges and city people and craftsmen shall rest upon this venerable day. It's not a venerable day of the sun. It's an evil day of Lucifer. Your day is Saturday, the seventh day of rest. Not Sunday, not a man coming up with his own law because you lost track of your law, which telling you about your Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, that is your rest day. Not only your rest day, it's a day to recharge and reconnect your energy back to the spiritual realm. That is your day, not what these men are telling you. Hosea 4 verse 11, what did he give you to replace your Sabbath? What did he give you? Hosea 4 11, whoredom. 
every Saturday. What are you looking to do on your Saturdays? You're planning out the next big party that Saturday night when you should be pulling in your energy. That's what he's giving you. Whoredom, lusting after all kind of different things you need to go do and get on your Saturday. When you're done with that during the day, in the night you turn to wine. Whoredom and wine, that's what he's giving you. Liquor, alcohol, and red. Dark red, if you look at the meaning of wine, it means dark red. What was red in our Esau message? What was red in our Esau message? Lower fourth dimension and second dimension. He's giving you spiritual wickedness. And new wine is giving you more wine. More of that wickedness. More of that alcohol. More of everything to pull you away from your covenant with the Most High. Take away your heart. It takes away your thoughts. It takes away your sound mind. All of these things that he's pushing on you. Whoredom and liquor for your Sabbath. And then he extended it to all days of the week. Hosea 7 verse 5. In the day of our leaders, the leaders of the children of Israel, when we decided we're going to break away from the covenant with the Most High and the Lord, the princes, which are the second in command in the children of Israel, have made our leaders sick with the bottle of wine. Sick with the bottle of wine. Sick, I say, with bottles of wine. They give us liquor. Bitter water to move us away from our holy covenant. Take away our sound mind and our sound thoughts. The children of Israel and their leaders stretched out their hands because they got uprooted and they died spiritually to the scorners. Who are the scorners? The Gentiles that we were handed over to. Esau that we were handed over to. They had us begging for what we need because we didn't know that our contract says all things shall be given unto you. Fruitful, you shall be fruitful. Fruitful, you shall be fruitful. Your land shall be plenty. Harvest time will not end. That's what your contract said. You will increase greatly among all nations forever. You shall be blessed forever. That's what your contract said. You shall rule everything. Sad land, sea, and air. You shall rule everything. You don't have to beg anyone because, because your name would have been esteemed in front of the Lord and the Most High. You need to beg no one. You are the spiritual people of the Most High. You need to beg no one who's lower in vibration than you are. You don't need to beg them anything at all. Because you have walked contrary to your contract, this is why these lower vibrational beings can step in and force you to stretch out your hands to them. This is what your Sabbath is about. This is the reality of your Sabbath. I'm bringing back to your attention the purpose of your Sabbath, your day of rest. But now you have to strengthen your spiritual body on this day. Balance your polarity, your positive and your negative energy. That's what the Most High and how the Most High created you. Masculine, male and feminine, female created he, them. Male, that's your masculine energy, your positive energy. Female, that's your feminine energy, your negative energy. The two have to be balanced and be as one. The day is set aside. The Sabbath day is set aside. In the ancient Sabbath, that's the day it's set aside. For what? For polarizing, balancing of your body, your spiritual body, and your physical body, and your mental body. You are three in one, my people. So that the most high energy can function within you in balance. That's what the day is for. Not for liquor and party and sex and drugs or whatever else you're doing on your Sabbath. That's not the purpose of it. It's to bring your body back 
to what it needs to be in order for the Most High to do all those seven things in the agreement, making you the blessed people. The one day out of seven set aside for the purpose of putting the body in what? Harmony. In complete attunement with the cosmic energy, the etheric energy, the life force, the prana, the sushumna, the aida, the pingala. That's the day to do it, to bring it back into one, making sure your body is functioning, polarized to the maximum, balanced to the max. That's what the day is for. Then you drink and eat and be merry. And I'm not talking drinking liquor. Don't get me confused. Drink natural things. That's what your day is for. Let's ask the Lord Thoth why our body needs to be balanced and polarized. Know you, oh man. Know you, oh man, that you in your form is two. It's dual, balanced in polarity, the negative and the positive. You are two in one. You can't have the negative without the positive. You just can't let one run away from the other. They have to be balanced. Know that when fast on you, death approaches. It is only because you are out of balance. Your balance is shaking. You either have too much negative energy in your body or too little positive or too much positive in your body, too little negative. It has to be balanced. It is only because one pole is lost. Two poles have to be running at the same time. Know that your body, when in perfect balance, as to what you're going to do on your Sabbath, may never be touched by the finger of death. That's what the Most High and the Lord were preparing you for on your Sabbath to make sure death can never reach you. Sickness can never reach you. Disease can never reach you. That's why they tell you, stay away from the meat because that's going to bring in death and move your polarity, make you lose one of your poles. Know that your body, when in perfect balance, may never be touched by the finger of death. Yes, even accident may only approach you when the balance is gone. So when you don't have your balance and you're missing out on your Sabbath to properly rebalance yourself, you are prone to accident, death, disease, and all kind of things when you are in balance. Equal positive with equal negative, you shall live on in time and not taste of death. These are not myth and storytelling. This is knowledge that we had lost and we started facing death. How old was Noah when he was building his ark? How long did Noah live for? Noah lived for over 900 years because Noah had this knowledge and didn't face death at the time that we're facing death. 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, 40 years old, we look old and like we're ready to die already because we lost the balance equilibrium. That's what we have lost. And we moved away from the Sabbath, which was that day to give us that balance. That's what the Sabbath is for. Bring us in balance and in harmony with the cosmic force in you. One pole is drawn downward, fast approach is death. Once you lose one pole, fast from thee goes the balance of life. You're ready to die now. Then on to thee, cold death approaches. And change must come to thine unbalanced life. If you want to move out of that state you're in right now, and you have a big man talk, or a big woman talk with yourself, and you say, what neophyte DAG might be saying, it might not be true, but let me give it a try. Let me give it a try. And you see for yourself. You be your own judge. Purpose of the Sabbath. True purpose. And we're not talking about no Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week, not the seventh day. The seventh day is Saturday. 
It's the purpose of it, to bless and to praise the Most High. And the Lord told, say thanks and praise to them for getting you through the past six days. Now is my day of rest. I know you're resting in the heavens, so rest with me. Show me and give me direction and how I can keep my life in balance. Bring me back to your cosmic energy. That's the purpose of the Sabbath, to strengthen your spiritual sign between the Most High and the Lord and you. That's the purpose of your Sabbath, to balance your polarity so that the energy of the Most High that is within you can function in balance. You are the kingdom of the Most High. Within you is the Most High, and within the Most High is you. You have to bring that back to balance. Reconnect yourself back to the holy cosmic force of the Most High. To be blessed by the Most High. The Most High said he blessed man. Genesis 1 verse 28. The first of your law. So you have to honor the Most High and the Lord on the Sabbath. For getting that blessing that you're going to move yourself back to. And stop walking contrary in the way of the law of the Most High and the statutes of the Most High. It is your seventh day of rest from all work. But I'm going to be realistic with you right now because many of us have to work on the Sabbath because we have jobs that are on the Sabbath. Do as best as you can to bring in the energy. Go do your work with Esau and the Gentiles or whomever else you're working with. But keep the spirit of the Most High within you. You know the law and that's good enough. You practice as best as you can given your circumstances. But for those who are not working, oh children of Israel, you have to do as much as you can to tie yourself into that energy. You're doing yourself a disservice by not pulling in the energy of the Sabbath, not observing the Sabbath, not balancing yourself on the Sabbath. You are shortchanging yourself. Hosea 14 verse 1. O children of Israel, return unto the Lord. O children of Israel, return unto the Lord. O children of Lewis, return unto the Lord. Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, your nectar, your spiritual energy. For you have fallen by your out of balance with the laws of the Most High. Out of balance with your polarity of the body. Out of balance with your spirit within the Most High and of the Most High. Return back to your laws so your contract can be put back in place and you can reap the benefit of being a part of the covenant. No sense in saying, I'm the covenant people and I'm the covenant this, when you're not following your own covenant and breaking every covenant, every chance that you get. Hosea 13 verse 4, Yet I am the Lord those Melchizedek, thy netta, thy netta am I. From the land of America, my land is in America. My ancient Galilee, my ancient Atlantis, my ancient Egypt, that's my land. Don't watch what the Gentiles and Esau are doing now in America, saying it's their land. No, it's not. It's being uprooted right from under their feet. They know it, but they're just not telling you. And you shall know, O oh, children of Israel, no other lower G God but me. No other lower G God but the Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, for there is no Savior besides me. There is no Savior besides me. There is none that's a savior besides me, your Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah. Return unto the Lord so you can get your blessings back and you can be back in balance with the most high law and spirit. Isaiah 43 verse 10, because he's making sure that he's telling you, 
over and over, the Lord is talking to you. You, O oh, children of Israel, children of Judah, children of Jacob, you are my witness, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. You are the peculiar people that is talked about, that they made that Sabbath ready and waiting for you, not for anyone else, but for you, though you may know and believe me. Though you may know and believe me, though you may know and believe and understand, though I am he, understand, though I am he, understand, though I am he. You notice they have that and the I am is in italics. That's another indication when they're making change to your Bible. Understand, though I am he, understand, though I am he. Those I am he, not that I am he. Who is he? That who the hell is that? There is no that. That's those I am he. Before me, there was no little G God running around claiming that they are your God. None, because they know the true God exists in the fifth and above. All they have to do is just come and move you away from the knowledge of that. But there is no God formed before Thoth. Neither shall there be any after Thoth. That's your only Lord. Isaiah 43 verse 11. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And besides Thoth, the Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, there is no other Savior. Isn't that what we saw here in Hosea 13 verse 4? There is no other Savior beside me. There is no other Savior beside me. So if you think Asher, if you think Asher is going to save you, no, Asher is not going to save you. Asher is the capital of Assyria during the Assyrian Empire. Nowadays, our modern day Asher is Washington, D.C. Do you think Washington, D.C. is going to save you? No, Asher is not going to save you. None at all. My friend, my brothers, the great and all-pervading soul of the divine force exists. Don't let anyone tell you any nonsense that it doesn't exist. It exists. There is a path you may follow. This is all on you. No free will will be taken from you. You have the choice to say, I am going to work with this or I'm going to reject all this information Neophyte DAG is giving me. I'm going to walk differently or I'm just going to do the same thing and ignore everything. The path lies within you. The kingdom of the Most High is within you. It's within you. The temple of the Most High is within you. It's the same thing said differently, but it's within you and it lies within you. The path is the creation of absolute and perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit of the Most High. Perfect and absolute and divine love within yourself because you have to love your fellow man and your fellow woman, which is your extended family, not just your immediate family. Show that same love and blessing and giving unto everyone, regardless of their color, black, white, Jews, Gentile, whatever. It has to be one love, unified love, but we have to know the truth behind all that love. We can't continue lying to save love. We have to tell the truth because now we're in the age of truth. Because in one who there is hate, fear, anger exists, the divine cannot manifest in you. Let me repeat it one more time. In the person where hate Fear, anger, and all types of negative emotion exist. The divine Holy Spirit, the divine energy of the Most High and of the Lord cannot come and do the things that you want it to do. Oil and water can't mix. The Holy Spirit and the Most High's energy cannot mix with negative energy. You got to choose one. You can't serve two masters at the same time. 
You got to choose a master. Either you're going to love one and hate the other. But you have to choose. That's what it's telling you. Oil and water can't mix. So you have the path within your hand. The next step is up to you. This is some of the things that you can do on your Sabbath to bring your energy, your polarity into a balanced state. Your energy, your polarity comes down to two of your senses, the two that you weren't told about. Your sixth sense and your seventh sense. Your sixth sense is your magnetic energy. Your seventh sense is your etheric energy, the cosmic force. Those two have to be brought back in balance to reconnect you the right way back to the Holy Spirit. If you want to get as much as you can out of that balanced polarity. In the mornings when you get up, you make sure you pray to the Most High and the Lord and give thanks every morning that you be. You get on your knees and you pray to the Most High and the Lord. Show your respect. Ask for spiritual things. Don't go begging for all kind of material things. The Most High knows what you want, but he cannot connect with you in the right way in your material prayers. You got to ask for spiritual clarity for the Holy Spirit to guide you, not you guiding yourself in your own self-conceits. One hour in the morning on your Sabbath, you're going to lay down with your head to the north. One hour, you're going to lay down and just calm your mind and focus on your energy that's at the top of your body from your chest area to your head. Then another hour throughout that day, on the Sabbath again, you're going to lay with your head to the south, the south of the equator. You're going to focus your energy from your chest all the way down to your feet. That's the way you balance the polarity in your body. You do it on the Sabbath. That's what the Sabbath was about. If you're one of those who want to maximize on how you do things, you don't have to wait until the Sabbath. That's the minimum recommendation. You can do other days throughout the week, but that's how you balance your polarity. Your upper poles and your lower poles because your equator is at your solar plex right underneath your rib bone, which is your cup. Your cup runneth over. Your rib is shaped like a cup. So that's what it means when your cup runneth over. Eat healthy and drink non-alcohol throughout that day. Be happy and merry with friends, like-minded friends that are of the same spiritual mind. You can also be with people that are non-spiritual, but you have to maintain that spiritual connection on that day. You have to work harder to maintain it. Don't let anyone rip you out of the flow of that day and put you into a spot or a situation that's against the laws, the principle, the plan, and the day of the Most High. Do not do any work. Do not do any work. It's a day of rest from all your work. And that means do not take part in negative social media, negative political media, negative money media, negative news media telling you all kind of death, killing, rape, robbery, all kind of things on your Sabbath. You don't need that energy on your Sabbath. It's a day of rest. Mental rest as well from all that negative that you've been bombarded with on all types of forums and mediums that you use. A day of rest from all of that activity. And before going to bed, when you end your day, get back on your knees and pray. You should do that every night, not only on the Sabbath, but especially on the Sabbath. On your knees, giving thanks for getting you through the day alive and well and kicking and having a very blessed day. Continue the rest of my week in this manner. Oh, my Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah. Oh, my most high, Allah. Continue my week. 
just the way I started it at the end of my week. Fully blessed, fully balanced. Keep me this way forever and forever. That's how you spend your Sabbath, balancing your pole on the Sabbath. Meditate with your head to the north. One hour, as I've told you, concentrating where? On your heart area, your chest area, through your throat, then to your pituitary, which is the forehead, right between your eyes at the forehead, right there, and then sending it to the back of your head, which is your pineal, and then sending that energy to your top of your head, which is your crown, but just using your mind and concentrate your thoughts at the center of your chest. You put the focus at the center of your chest. Keep it there for a few. Then you move that focus to your throat. And you keep the energy there for a few. Then you move the energy and you focus to the center of your forehead, right between your eyes. That's your pituitary. Keep it there for a little. Then you move that focus to the back of your head. Keep it there for a little. Then you move that focus to the top of your head. You're going to keep the energy focus right there. And then you go back to your chest and you start over again. And you keep that process going, extending the amount of time you're spending on each area as you go along. Do that for an hour throughout the day. And then at the other hour that you're going to spend on the lower portion, you start now at the chest. Move your focus to your navel area. That's your solar plex. Then you're going to move the focus to your private area. Man and woman, it's between where your private is and where your anus area is. Right in that middle area, that's your sacrum. You keep your energy focus right there. Then you're going to move the energy to your thigh and your focus, your concentration on your thigh. Then you're going to move it to your ankles, both ankles at the same time. And then you're going to move it to your feet. And then you work your way back up. Back to your chest and you keep repeating that for one hour. That's how you rebalance and you bring back energy to those areas of the body. Revitalize every cell of your body. Revitalize the glands in your body that need to do spiritual things, but they have to be functioning spiritually. In doing this, you don't have to wait until the Sabbath, as I tell you. You can do this every day or every other day or a shortened version of it. But on the Sabbath, you have to do it for that hour to make sure you're spending time in rebalancing the poles, the upper pole of your body with the lower pole of your body. That's what it's all about. Which brings me to what your contract looks like after you have implemented your Sabbath into your agreement with the Most High. The Most High's responsibility remains the same. He's going to do all these things for you. But now you have to, on top of not eating any blood of any flesh at any time, making any idols of stone, wood, or metal, no time at all, you shall keep your Sabbath as a holy sign between the Lord, the Most High, and yourselves, O children of Israel, at all time. That's the new addendum added to your agreement so you can stay within the laws, within the blessing, within the harvest season, within the planting season, within the four season, within the greatly increased season, within the blessed season, within the subdued season, at all time. And your name, O children of Israel, shall be esteemed. It shall be esteemed again. Believe me, it shall be esteemed. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Most High. Your name shall be esteemed. I had told you that you are threefold in nature. And I'm going to start it. I'm not going to go too deep into it for this message. But I want to show you what I'm talking about. And what you should know that others know this. And it's being used against you. 
You are threefold in nature, O children of Israel, as told to you by the Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah. Emerald tablets, tablet 15, secrets of secrets. You are threefold, physical, astral, and mental, all in one. That's you, O oh my people, that's you. That is you in physical you have three channels in your physical body. The blood, which flows the energy through the body in a circular motion. That's why he's telling you, you have to eat a certain food that's going to keep your blood pure. Meat, starch, dairy, sugar affects your blood and it's going to root you up from your physical self. That's why he gave you that diet. An appetite saying, green herbs, green trees, seeded fruits, the ones that are natural, organic, shall be your meat. Because he's protecting your blood. He's giving you the blueprint to protect your blood. He's giving you the blueprint to protect your blood, which it moves in a vertical, a circular motion, reacting on the heart to continue your life. You need to have good blood. Your blood needs to be purged. Sickness, ailment, death, disease cannot touch you if your blood is good. The second one that's needed for your physical body, magnetism. That's your sixth sense. No one told you that. Magnetism moves through your nerve path, carrying the energy to all cells of the tissues, carrying any instruction the mind give to the body, to that cell area of the body. That's what magnetic energy is, your sixth sense. You send the instruction, it travels the path of the magnetic energy and execute that instruction that your mind just gave to whatever you wanted to do. But we have been sending negative energy in our limited magnetic stream, creating more negative, cutting us further off from our magnetic energy that has to be built up in our body. Thou anointed my head with oil till my cup runneth over, till my solar plex runneth over with magnetic energy, which is called the vital force, and with the akasa, which is called the life force which flows through the channels, flow through your spiritual channels, 12 spiritual channels within your body, another 12 on top of your head, but it's connected within that 12 that's within you. Subtly flowing energy to your physical body, completing your channel in the mastery. That's why your Sabbath is set up, so you can go back to mastering yourself, mastering your physical, your blood, your magnetic energy, your akasa, because the mastery does what? Lies within the secret life in your body. In their mastery lies the secret of the life in the body. That's the secret life that's within you. Don't you know the kingdom of the most high is within you? That's the secret life. Once you can bring these three in harmony, perfect them, eat right, follow the instruction that the Lord has given you so your blood can be pure. Pull in the magnetic energy that I'm going to show you how to pull in. And then activating your Akasa pathway, the channels. That's this right here. This on the right hand side is activating your Akasa channels within your body. Your ankle, that's where your root chakra is. That's where your root chakra is. Your sacrum by your private part area. That's what it is. Your solar plex, which is your third channel, right in the navel area of your belly. Job 40 verse 16. Don't you know his strength lies within his sacrum. His strength lies within his loins. And his force lies within the navel of his belly, which is his solar plex. It's telling you all along. It's telling you all along. Then you move to your heart, the center of your chest. Your heart chakra, 
that's what it is. Then from there, from there, you move it to your throat. That's your throat chakra. Then you move it to your pituitary, which connects to your pineal. They're all in one. One channel running from the front to the back, the back to the front. The front, the pituitary, controlled, controlled your objective mind, your objective thoughts, the ones that you plan the ones that you have to initiate on your own. Oh, I'm gonna move my hand. Your pituitary sends that signal. Any voluntary function that you say, hey, I'm gonna do it, that's your pituitary that starts that process. Any involuntary function, when you're frightened, you're blinking of your eyes, you're twitching, your unconscious ways of doing things, that starts in your solar plex. That's why you have to conquer your solar plex to get rid of fear, anger, hate, all kind of negative because that's the involuntary area. And that's what the balancing the pole does. It sends enough cosmic force and magnetic energy to those areas of the body to help the body to revive itself to its spiritual function. Then at the back of your head, which is your pineal, that controls the pituitary, it controls the solar plex. It is the boss of the house. Everything goes through that is of a spiritual nature. And until you put your energy there, it's not drawing in any spirit. So you have to put your energy at the back of your head. Put your pointer finger of your right hand at the back of your head and hold your thought on that pressing at the back of your head. Hold it there for like 30 seconds and then remove your finger and keep your thought back there as if your finger is still pressing at the back of your head. And that now will introduce you to your pineal. Welcome to your pineal. Once you can keep that energy there, hold it there for a little bit and try to think something negative. Try to think something negative. It won't come in if your thought is strong enough at the back of your head. If it's coming in, strengthen and put more energy into thinking and holding your energy at the back of your head. Negative can't come in. It has to run away. It has to run away. That's your seventh chakra that your akasa is running through. There's another five, but we'll tackle that in another day. Don't forget your crown, the top of your head. 24 nerves are in the top of your head. 12 of them connected to your pituitary, your physical objective mind. Another 12 connected to your pineal, your spiritual subjective mind. That's the one that's the boss of the house. Remember, your pineal controls every part of your body. It is the boss for every other part and glands of your body. It starts there, and you want to make sure it's functioning in a balanced state. Physical is good. Your blood is good. Your magnetism is good. Your akasa is good. You have unlocked the secret of life in your body once you get it to that state. And part of getting there is to reconnect yourself with the purpose of your Sabbath. Now I'm going to leave you these references until our next message. We go deeper into these things. Your blood, these are the verses that are telling you how to treat and how to care for your blood. Genesis 1 verse 29 tells you exactly how to eat. It backs it up in Genesis 9 verse 4, telling you no flesh, stay away from Leviticus. Leviticus is the instructions in your fallen state. Don't let anyone continue to fool you. Go back to the original. The Most High didn't wait until in the next story to tell you how to eat. He told it to you, page one of the book you were told how to eat. So you don't have to go to Leviticus to figure it out. It's right there on page one. Ezekiel 47, 12 tells you again what was told to you in Genesis 1 verse 29, but it adds some more to it. It's telling you now the herbs shall be your medicine. The herbs, it says, shall be your medicine. I repeat, the herbs shall be your medicine. So any man, Esau and Gentile, running up and down telling you that you should take their medicine. 
Ask them, is there any herbs in it? I said, ask them, if they're putting a herb in their medicine, then you can take it. If they show you what herb they're putting in, that's from the natural earth that the most I instructed you to take. But if it don't have no herb in it, fling it away, throw it away. It's not for you because he gave you the instructions in Ezekiel 47, 12. Magnetism, Job 40 verse 16 told you about your magnetism, how you should raise your magnetism. But first, let me introduce you to your magnetic energy, your sixth sense. Take your left hand, close it into a fist, close it into a fist, hold it there and keep your thoughts on where your fist is closed. And after a few seconds, you'll feel the energy start tingling at your left hand. It's trying to come into your left hand. Your left hand is the inlet for the magnetic energy. So once you close the fist and the energy is trying to come in, it's going to ball up by your left fist, waiting to come in. Once you feel that tingling, welcome to your magnetic energy. Open your left hand after that and let the energy in. Now you have control over it. Tell it how to come into your body. Tell it where to go into your body. Welcome again to your magnetic energy. As I say, close your left hand in a fist and let the energy ball up by your left hand, waiting and anxious to come in. It's trying to come in, that's the inlet. The outlet is on your right hand, that's one of the outlet to let out the magnetic energy. You don't want to let out your energy. You want to keep it in your body, send it directly to your solar plex. Let your cup be filled and overflow with magnetic energy. Let's move on. Contract and release. Pull in and release. Pull in and release your abdomen. Pull it in and release it. That will bring energy. That will pump the cosmic energy. That will pump the magnetic energy. That will pump the akasa in your solar plex to help you to remove darkness and remove that involuntary function from your solar plex. Your solar plex is waiting for instructions from you. Nothing is involuntary in your body unless you want to make it or you just don't know that you still have control over it. It's waiting for your instruction, that solar plex area. So you Tell it what to do. You pull in energy. Send the energy to my solar plex. But if you want to do it manually, contract and release. Contract and release. You can close your right hand in a fist. Close your right hand in a fist. That will bring in the energy, the magnetic energy through the left side of your body. And you tell that energy where to go. Go to my solar plex. Go to the solar plex. The longer you keep that right hand closed and keep that thought because the akasa and magnetism works only with your mind. Works only with your mind. It's waiting for your mental to control it and give it instructions. That's the secret of life within your body. You keep that right hand closed and you pull in the energy by your thought. Tell it to come in through your left hand and go to whatever parts of the body and then go to your stomach area for storage until your cup runneth over. That's the other way to pull in your magnetic energy. Turn your head to the left. When you turn your head in any direction, it cuts off that nostril passage and leaves the other one open only. Turn your head to the left. Only your right nostril will be breathing in. Your right nostril brings in the akasa. So if you want to bring in an abundance of akasa, turn your head to the left. Take a deep breath. Only your right nostril will be breathing in the akasa because that's the one that brings in the akasa. Warm energy. That's how you breathe in the akasa. That's how you breathe in magnetic energy mixed with the akasa as well. 
These are the three things that you want to do daily if you can. Twice a day if you can. Three times a day if you can. You can never overdose on magnetic energy. You would just glow more in the spirit of the Most High. He put those energy there for you. The Akasa, as we have covered, Genesis 32, verse 30, tells you about the pineal. I saw the face of the Lord. I saw the face of the Most High. And the place was called pineal. John 3, verse 14, tells you about the serpent have to rise up. The serpent, which is your kundalini energy, that energy that we started out from a while ago in the ankle, moved it up to our crown. That's your kundalini path, that it has to rise up. Genesis 28 verse 12 tells you about the endocrine, the other five glands that's within your body that needs to be activated as well. But we won't cover that in this message. With that said, we'll pause the button right here and we'll go some more in the physical body in our next message. Oh, children of Israel, return unto the Lord, I tell you. Return unto the energy of the Most High and the Lord. Stand strong, O children of Israel. Stand strong, O children of Judah. Stand strong, O children of Jacob. In the name of the Most High. Allah, Yah, Yod, Heh, Vahweh, Elohim, God in our modern day, and in the name of the Lord, Dov, Melchizedek, Jehovah, there is no other Savior besides you, O oh my Lord, forever and forever. Mm -hmm.